What's up everyone, we're back at it again. My name is Brad and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I want to go over how I've cared for my white knight philodendron so far. In my previous video, I mentioned that I had picked up a white knight philodendron that was in pretty rough shape. So with a little bit of experimentation and a little bit of research online, I'm gonna go over what I've done so far to care for this beautiful plant. Let's get to it. When I picked up the white knight philodendron, it was actually two stems that were potted into one particular pot. This pot was completely saturated in water. I didn't think that the soil content was appropriate for the white knight philodendron. So the first thing that I did was I separated the two stems. I also gave the white knight philodendron a new potting medium that was better draining. That way I really wouldn't risk any kind of root rot. So here's one of the stems that I separated. And here's the second stem that I separated. As you can see, these plants are still in pretty rough shape, but there are promising signs that these particular white knight philodendrons are on the road to recovery. I've heard different things about lighting requirements for the white knight philodendron, and I decided to not only do research online, but to also do a bit of experimentation with what I thought would be most appropriate for these type of plants based on how I care for my other plants. So, Again, to start off with, what I did was I redid the potting medium. So this is a potting soil that is about a 50% um, uh, potting mix with 50% pyrolite. Now that's going to give this pretty, pretty good drainage. Meaning when I pour water into the top, the water almost immediately comes out of the bottom, which is great. And then in my terracotta pot, I did something very similar where I was probably more on the 60% of the potting soil and 40% pyrolite. The reason why I gave this more potting soil than pyrolite is because I'm in a terracotta pot. And with the terracotta pot being extremely porous, the moisture will wick out very quickly. And I wanted to give the plant an opportunity to soak up as much water as it needed before it dried out and prepared for its next watering. Let's talk about the lighting requirements that I've given this plant so far. This plant, I had placed outside in full sun. The reason why I did that is because the white knight philodendron is a variegated plant. So typically with your variegated plants, the more light that you give it, the more variegation you would get from the plant. You wanna be careful though when it comes to giving the plant too much sun because if it over variegates, especially in the case of a plant that has white in it, you might end up with leaves that don't have any kind of green in it. Green is an essential component for a plant in order to photosynthesize. If you end up with a leaf that is completely white, your plant is essentially not producing enough food. Your leaf is gonna completely brown out and then you're left with a not so pretty looking plant. So you can see that I've kept this plant in full sun. And the reason why you know this is because the leaves have uh, basically bleached out. So all of the pre-existing leaves have bleached out. Now, one thing that this plant is showing promising signs of is it's not dead. It's actually pushing new growth. So this leaf that is emerging is brand new. When I first got this plant, it didn't have uh, a leaf that was popping out of the middle. Uh, so I really wanted to give this as much sun as possible without killing the plant. So I think that this is the most exciting one of the two stems that I repotted. The reason why I think that this is the most exciting one is because this is a brand new leaf. When I first got this philodendron white knight, this leaf existed, this leaf existed, and these two leaves existed as well. For this particular plant, what I do is I give it direct sun, but it's not direct all day sun. So it's currently placed underneath a table. And what happens is when the sun rises, uh, it gets uh, a lot of good direct morning sunlight. And when the afternoon sun hits, the only light that it receives is light that is coming through the table. So it's filtered light. This leaf is gorgeous. It's almost a half moon. And the white has really held up pretty nicely. It's been unfurled for the previous three days or so. And most importantly, is I have a new leaf that is in the midst of formation right 
here. So with that being said, the direct sunlight so far has worked beautifully for this Philodendron White Knight. Now I am going to have to readapt this particular plant to indoor environments during the winter and as it becomes cooler outside. And when I do this and when I try to acclimate it, I'm gonna be very careful about doing it. I don't want to shock the plant. So I'm gonna probably do this over a course of two or three weeks. But just take a look at this leaf. Even the margins have this beautiful, beautiful white color. Again, this leaf is half white, half green, and then I have a new leaf that is emerging here. I've put this on a totem because I also want to see if I can encourage the leaves to get big. The bigger this leaf gets, or the bigger the leaves get, the more gorgeous I think that this plant is ultimately going to be. So that's how I've taken care of this Philodendron White Knight when it comes to sunlight. If you like videos like this and you want to see more videos about plant tips and tricks, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and would mean a lot. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. Let's get into the water requirements. For the watering, I have found that I need to water this plant pretty much every single week. I like to fully water this plant to where the soil for the most part becomes fully saturated. I know that the soil is fully saturated when I have water coming out of the bottom. The reason why I find that the frequency needs to be roughly every week is because not only am I in a terracotta pot, but the plant is also outside. So I'm losing moisture via evaporation and I'm also lo losing moisture because of the porousness of the terracotta pot. So far, the plant has loved this watering schedule and it hasn't really shown any signs of being under or overwatered. And when I'm assessing whether or not the plant is being over or underwatered, I'm only really looking at the newest leaf. The reason why I'm doing this is because the plant was in pretty rough shape when I first got it. So for me to make a determination if I'm under or over watering using the older leaves is really not going to give me that much information on the real health of the plant. I'm going to keep these old leaves on here as well because I want to make sure that I give my plant the best chance to form photosynthesis and to feed itself. Aesthetically, it's not too beautiful, but in time, once I get more vertical growth, I then will be able most likely to get rid of these lower leaves without really impacting the food production of the plant. Now let's get into fertilization and other kind of nutrient requirements. I haven't yet fertilized this plant, so I don't want to tell you what kind of fertilizer is best used for the philodendron white knight. I might next season start off with an all-purpose fertilizer just to see how that does. I also haven't yet amended the water with silica for this particular plant. The reason why you want to amend the water with silica when you are taking care of white variegated plants is because what that silica does is it allows this white to stay white for as long as possible. What's going to happen is this white will brown out. It's only a matter of time and I'm going to accept it. But all in all, I think that this plant has done remarkably well without being fertilized and without having any kind of additional amendments added to the water. So there you have it. Again, I really haven't taken care of a white knight philodendron before and I'm experimenting and learning and I'm glad that I can take you along in the process. I think that the plants are doing pretty well for as little knowledge as I have of taking care of these plants. If you have any tips or tricks of taking care of the white knight philodendron, please leave them in the comments. I love to hear them. I want to hear them and I will be happy to implement them if that means getting a bigger and more beautiful plant. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.